Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is July 29th, 2022. And today I hope to uh, have a very encouraging word for you. Even though it may sound, the title of it may sound uh, not so encouraging, the title of this message is called Lost in the Darkness. And the reason it's called that is because we live in one of the darkest and perhaps the darkest time in history. Let me um, go to Matthew 24 where Jesus talks about this time. 24.15, so when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel, I believe we have seen the abomination of desolation. I believe that it is uh, the entire thing that's happening with respect to the pandemic and its solution. <clears throat> and that this has been designed in order to change our DNA and actually erase our concept of God from literally from our bodies. I believe the abomination of desolation has actually been introduced into many people through the so-called solution to the pandemic. And so I see the abomination of desolation. So when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel, standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. Let the reader understand what the holy place is. The holy place is me. The holy place is you. We are the holy place. When we believe in Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within us and we become living stones. We become, ultimately, we become New Jerusalem we become the temple of God that houses God in his fullness. We are the holy place. So when you see the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place, in other words, coming into men, which is what we see now, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. That's speaking to Christians. Anyone who is a Christian is a Jew. He is in Judea. The word of the Lord is to flee to the mountains, to leave Babylon. I know two people who have done that. I know another couple that is in the process of doing that. Verse 17, let the one who is on the housetop not go down to take what is in his house. That means give up all your preconceived notions and let the one who's in the field not turn back to take his cloak. And alas, for women who are pregnant and for those who are nursing infants in those days, if you have your own agendas, if you have your own spiritual children out there and you think you're doing something for God, but you don't see the time you're living in, alas for you, alas for you, because you do not see what's happening. You're too busy with your spiritual infants. And you think that we have lots of time And we don't. Verse 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been from the beginning of the world until now. No, and never will be. And if those days had not been cut short, no human being would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. Then there will be great tribulation such as has not been from the beginning of the world until now. No, and never will be. This is the worst time ever. And if those days had not been cut short, no human being would be saved. No flesh would be left alive. But those days will be cut short. If you're paying attention to what is going on, they are trying to merge men with machine at this time. This is even prophesied in the book of Daniel 
with respect to the iron and clay not being able to mix at the very end, the very last kingdom. So this is all prophetic. And, and if you have been watching, you see that we have come into the prophetic ful fulfillment of many, many things. We are at the culmination of the age. We are at the end of the age. Now this has this is an incredibly difficult time. This has been, I think, the hardest year of my life to continue standing strong in faith. I have been buffeted repeatedly for the last year. The buffeting has been primarily in my flesh and in my wife's flesh and in my son's flesh, my one son who still lives here at home. Repeated sicknesses and illnesses even to the point where we have despaired of life. Let me read you a scripture where Paul says the same thing. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8. For we do not want you to be unaware, brothers, of the affliction we experienced in Asia. For we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death. That's how I have felt. That's how my wife has felt many times over this past year. But that was to make us rely not on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. Yes, this, this year, this past year, has been a time of mortifying the flesh, of coming to an end of my hopes, of coming to an end of things that I thought I would do because I simply haven't had the strength or the ability to do things that I've wanted to do. He delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us. On him we have set our hope that he will deliver us again. Let me read that again. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8, 9, and 10. For we do not want you to be unaware, brothers, of the affliction we experienced in Asia. For we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death. But that was to make us rely not on ourselves, but on God, who raises the dead. He delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us. On him we have set our hope that he will deliver us again. It just so happens over the past week, uh, a little more than a week, while my wife and my son suffered through two full weeks of COVID, we read this book by C.S. Lewis called The Silver Chair. I want to just read a couple short excerpts from the book that occur at the end after the witch that had held Prince Rillian captive, was killed. There's a miracle first. The prince is speaking, he says, Look, friends, he said, holding up the shield toward them. An hour ago it was black and without device, and now this. The shield had turned bright as silver, and on it, redder than blood or cherries, was the figure of the lion. Now this is the lion Aslan, who in the Chronicles of Narnia represents Jesus Christ. So he sees his Lord. He sees his Savior. Doubtless, said the prince, this signifies that Aslan will be our good Lord, whether he means us to live or die. And all's one for that. Incredible perception of C.S. Lewis. So insightful. He will be our good Lord whether we live or die. And then two pages later we have another excerpt. Friends, said the prince, when once a man is launched on such an adventure as this and it was the adventure that began with them killing the witch. 
When once a man is launched on such an adventure as this, he must bid farewell to hopes and fears. Otherwise, death or deliverance will both come too late to save his honor and his reason. So, like the prince and his three companions, we are in an adventure that's called the end of the age or the, the great tribulation. That's where we are. We have to say farewell to our hopes. Remember the parable of the foolish man who said that he was going to tear down his barn and build a great huge barn, another a big barn. And then Christ said, you fool, don't you know that this night your life will be required of you? You see, we have entered a time where it's time to let go of our hopes. It's, it's time to let go of trying to make money. Yes, we have to have enough money to, to buy our food and things, but you know, get rid of your ideas of getting rich. Get rid of your ideas of being something in this world. Say farewell to hopes, your hopes, your carnal hopes. Say farewell to your fears. Death may come. They're trying to kill us every day. And they try to scare us to death every day with what you hear on the news and what's coming. Now the monkeypox virus. And then some virus like Ebola, which is so horrible I can't even think of it. They pour things down upon us every day through their chemtrails. They control our weather. They manipulate our weather systems. They manipulate our storms. Look at these unprecedented storms that just passed through the heartland of, of the United States. One hit the area that I grew up in when I was in junior high and high school. 11 inches of rain within a few hours that flooded houses that had been there for over 60 years. Never had been flooded ever. People in Kentucky, towns underwater, people dying from the floods, unprecedented. Was it just something that happened? No, it's controlled like so much, open your eyes to see what's going on in the world. So we have to say goodbye to our hopes and our fears and trust in our good Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this week I also read a um, a word from a prophetess named Christine Beadsworth. Several months ago, she had a really excellent word concerning uh, how um, what they're trying to get everybody to take was the mark of the beast, a very good word. But this was a word that she had just this week. And I want to read just a couple of uh, paragraphs from it. The title of it was called Navigating Dire Straits by Christine Beadsworth. The first two paragraphs say this. Greetings, precious saints. This message is really for the forerunners, those who know that they're ahead of the rest of the body, breaking through the way and experiencing things that the body has not yet walked into and making a way where there was no way for the rest of the body to pass through. So really I'm talking to the tip of the spear, but what I'm saying will apply to the rest of the body of Christ in a short period of time. Because of the direction that the tip of the spear goes, the rest of the head of the spear follows. Remember, I've spoken many times about the tip of the spear passing through 
heavenly frequencies and hearing words and sounds and messages before the time that the rest of the body hears them. This is in order for them to be equipped and prepared to lead the way and show the body where to go. So for the last two weeks, ever since I started speaking about the oil and the wine first fruits offering, that was another good word she brought recently, the Lord has been emphasizing pressing and pressure. And every single time I've spent with the Lord, he's been speaking to me about the pressure and the pressing and the narrow place that the tip of the spear is in at this time. I can testify to you that I have been in a narrow place for a long time, pressed, pressured beyond what I would think I could have endured. Just as Paul said in the verse that I read to you earlier, and by the way, that verse Christine mentions in this word that she brings. It's such a powerful word. And I kept getting this picture of a strait of water between two high, jagged, rocky cliffs. If any of you have seen a picture of a strait, have a look on a map of the world or search the word strait and you will come up with pictures of a very narrow passage from one body of water to another. And it's usually accompanied by very high and treacherous rocks and land masses on either side. I really had a sense that the Spirit was emphasizing the words dire straits. Now later in this word, she, she likens this to the man-child being in the birth canal and about to be birthed, and that the final part, when the head crowns, that's the tightest place and the hardest place. And if the head was not still, not fused and not solid, it could not get through because the head bones themselves can overlap each other, tighten, get smaller, and then pass through the birth canal. But if the head had been totally solid with all the bones fused, the head would be too big to come through. We are being pressed like that. Our minds are being stretched. Our spirits are being stretched. We're coming into a new place. We're coming into a new level of faith but it's extremely, extremely hard. Now, over the last two weeks, the Lord led me to write a new song. And the song ends up being entitled, Lost in the Darkness. It, it went through four titles, the first title was in your presence I dwell second title was I can't stand alone third title was you are and the last title lost in the darkness I thought I was finished with the song I had actually that the part of the song where I have the lyrics lost in the darkness came in what I considered the bridge at that time, and I wrote the bridge at the suggestion of my brother, who said, your song needs a bridge, and it did. And one night, the Lord woke me up at like 2.30, and for some reason, I just got up, I came downstairs, and suddenly I had a melody and the chords on my piano that ended up being the bridge, and were the words, and the words came to me also that very night. And let me go ahead and read those to you. So here's the words for the bridge that I wrote that in the middle of the night. Uh, it was on July 20th. Lost in the darkness, if you don't come near, Caught in the cold with nothing but fear. 
You are my fortress, my refuge, my home. You are my one God. I can't stand alone. Crying out to God, I can't stand alone. I don't have enough in me to make it through this dark time. God has to be with us. So, you know, that was on the 20th of this month, and the song stayed there. Um, and then, a couple days later, actually, four days later on 724, there was a breakthrough in the spirit. New words were added that day. They go, so now I will praise you in the midst of my fear. My praise goes before you. Your coming is near. Now I will praise you and give you my fear. Your love lasts forever. Your kingdom draws near. And then I wasn't even finished then because two days later, on July 26th, then I had these words. So now I will praise you and lift up my voice. Your glory surrounds you. In you I rejoice. Yes, now I will praise you. Though hell marches on, your words are my warfare. I'll battle with song. Your words are my warfare. I'll battle with song. Those, the initial words of the, the very last part of, so now I will praise you. Well, actually, no, before that even. Even in the, um, the bridge, you are my fortress, my refuge, my home. You are my one God. I can't stand alone. Those words came from Scripture. And I, I want to share some of those with you. First, let's go to um, well. First, let me read Psalm 13 because this psalm really described how my wife and I felt during this time of COVID this month. <clears throat> my son and my wife are doing much better now, beginning this week. But Psalm 13 says, "As how long, O Lord?" How long, O oh, I am? Will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O oh, I am, my God. Lift up my eyes lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemies say I have prevailed over him. Lest my foes rejoice because I am shaken. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to I am because he has dealt bountifully with me. So that is a Psalm of David, Psalm 13. And then let's go to Psalm 18. Another Psalm of David. I love you, O oh, I am my strength. I am as my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon I am who is worthy to be praised and I am saved from my enemies. The cords of death encompassed me. The torrents of destruction assailed me. The cords of Sheol entangled me. The snares of death confronted me. 
In my distress, I called upon I am. To my God, I cried for help. From his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. Now, the beginning of this psalm, it says, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who addressed the words of this song to I am on the day when I am delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. Then let's go to Psalm 46. God, this is uh, of the sons of Korah. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth gives way. Though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. I am of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Our fortress, that's what I'm focusing on here. What is a fortress? It's where you go to become safe from the enemy. We must see God as our fortress in this time, regardless of what we see happening in the natural. Know that God is our fortress. Things are not going to... We cannot expect things to happen or to look like we've always thought. We know that they're planning food shortages. We've already seen food prices increase astronomically. They've been talking about food shortages now for practically a whole year. It looks like this is being engineered by the governments of the world. It's being done on purpose. Things are being done to us over and over in order to destroy our security, to destroy our sense of well-being, to unsettle us. We need to understand that this system is not going to continue. We never knew what it would look like. We've never experienced this before. People who've lived through wars, like certainly the First World War, Second World War, and any other war that is, you've seen bombardments of their civilization has been utter catastrophe. So people have experienced total confusion and destruction before, but this is now happening on a worldwide scale with the intent that men will not be the same if they survive it and if the kingdom of God does not come. In other words, if the kingdom of man continues, men will not be the same thing anymore. We will not be made in God's image anymore because they're doing away with that. They are literally changing, attempting to change the DNA of all men. They want to put Satan's imprint upon us and take God's imprint out of us. God, of course, will not allow that to happen because no flesh would be saved if Satan were allow were, were allowed to complete his plan. Psalm 46, verse 8, Come, behold the works of I Am, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. I Am of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen. He is our fortress. Then let's go to another wonderful psalm. By the way, Psalm 18, verse 2, is the one that mentioned the fortress, that God is our fortress. And then again in Psalm 91, verse 2, we see that. But we'll start with verse 1. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to I am, 
my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. See, my refuge and my fortress. Verse 2. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. This is what's happening now. A deadly pestilence has gone forth throughout the earth. God has allowed some of his people to taste that and has not delivered them from it. I had COVID back in the beginning of December 2021. My wife and my son here caught it the beginning of July of this year. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side. Ten thousand may fall at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. I believe this is the time we're in. I think we're going to see this literally. My hope is that I will see this literally in the flesh. But if I live or I die, Jesus is my good Lord. Because you've made I am your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent. By the way, if you haven't listened to my um, video on um, Before Abraham Was, I Am, I show you that Jesus identifies himself as I Am, as the Lord who the scripture constantly refers to. He is our creator. He is I Am. Because you have made I am your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him, I will protect him because he knows my name. Do you know the name of your Lord? Do you know the name of I am? Yeshua, Jesus the Christ. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Then another great one. This is another Psalm of David. This is Psalm 144. And again, it's in verse 2 that he mentions his fortress. Beginning verse 1, 144.1, a Psalm of David. Blessed be I am, my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. He is my steadfast love and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer my shield and he in whom I take refuge, who subdues peoples under me. So your fortress is I am. Your fortress is the Lord Jesus Christ. Your fortress is your stronghold. I am is your deliverer. Your fortress is your shield. I am is your shield. I am is your refuge. He is your fortress, your stronghold, your deliverer, your shield, your refuge. Verse 3, O I am, what is man that you regard him, or the son of man that you think of him? This was quoted in the book of Hebrews. Man is like a breath, his days are like a passing shadow. Bow your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains so that they smoke. Flash forth the lightning and scatter them. Send out your arrows and rout them. Stretch out your hand from on high. Rescue me and deliver me from the many waters, from the hand of foreigners whose mouths speak lies and whose right hand is a right hand of falsehood. 
we are being destroyed by foreigners in our own land. We are being destroyed by traitors in our own land. Rescue us, O Lord. And then, so often we see this in the Psalms. And David, David, a man after God's own heart. So, even though things are difficult, verse 9, I will sing a new song to you, O God. Upon a ten-stringed harp I will play to you, who gives victory to kings, who rescues David his servant from the cruel sword. Rescue me and deliver me from the hand of foreigners, whose mouths speak lies, and whose right hand is the right hand of falsehood. May our sons and their youth be like plants full grown, our daughters like corner pillars cut for the structure of a palace. May our granaries be full, providing all kinds of produce. May our sheep bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our fields. May our cattle be heavy with young, suffering no mishap or failure in bearing. May there be no cry of distress in our streets. Blessed are the people to whom such blessings fall. Blessed are the people whose God is I am. Then Psalm 145 begins, I will extol, and this again a Psalm of David, I will extol you, my God and my King, and bless your name forever and ever. Then Psalm 146, praise the Lord, praise I am, praise I am, O my soul. I will praise I am as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. And then Psalm 147, Praise I am, for it is good to sing praises to our God, for it is pleasant and a song of praise is fitting. Psalm 148, Praise I am, praise I am from the heavens, praise him in the heights, praise him all his angels, praise him all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of I Am. Verse 7. Praise I Am from the earth, you great creatures in all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and mist, stormy wind fulfilling his word. Mountains and hills, fruit trees and all cedars, beasts and all livestock, creeping things, and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and maidens together, old men and children, let them praise the name of I Am, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people, praise for all his saints, for the people of Israel who are near to him, praise I Am. We are Israel. We who believe in Jesus are Israel. We are those who will rule with God. Psalm 149. Praise I am. Praise I am. Sing to I am a new song. His praise in the assembly of the godly. And then Psalm 150, the last psalm. Praise I am. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise I am. Praise I am. Then Isaiah chapter 30. The last several verses starting in verse 27. See, the name of I am comes from afar, with burning anger and dense clouds of smoke. His lips are full of wrath, and his tongue is a consuming fire. His breath is like a rushing torrent, rising up to the neck. He shakes the nations in the sieve of destruction. He places in the jaws of the peoples a bit that leads them astray. And you will sing as on the night you celebrate a holy festival. Your hearts will rejoice as when people playing pipes go up to the mountain of I Am, to the rock of Israel. I Am will cause people to hear his majestic voice and will make them see his arm coming down with raging anger and consuming fire. 
with cloudburst and thunderstorm and hail. The voice of I am will shatter Assyria. Assyria is one of the nations and also one of the words used to designate Satan and the ruling kings of the earth. The voice of I am will shatter Assyria. The voice of I am will shatter Babylon the Great. The voice of I am will shatter the beast. The voice of I am will shatter Satan and his rod will strike them down. Every stroke I am lays on them with his punishing club will be, and listen to this, every stroke I am lays on them with his punishing club will be to the music of timbrels and harps as he fights them in battle with the blows of his arm. Isn't that amazing? Our God will fight for us as we praise him. That's what we need to do. The very last verse of the new song I wrote, Lost in the Darkness, goes, Yes, now I will praise you, though hell marches on. Your words are my warfare. I'll battle with song. We do not battle with guns. We do not think we're going to protect our lives because we believe in the Second Amendment and because we hold on to our guns. No, that is not my strength. That is not my refuge. That is not my fortress. That is not how I fight. I do not fight with weapons of the flesh. I fight with spiritual weapons. I fight with the Word of God. Your words are my warfare. Your words, O oh Lord, O oh I am, are my warfare. This is why it is so important to be washed with the Word. That's why the Scripture says, Be born of water, because the water is the Word. Wash yourselves with the Word of God. Be filled with the Word of God. And the Word of God today is praise God. Praise our Heavenly Father. Praise our Lord I Am. Your words are my warfare, O Lord. I will battle with song. I'm lost in the darkness 
if you won't draw near I'm caught in the cold with nothing but fear You are my fortress, my refuge, my home You are my one God, I can't stand alone I'm lost in the darkness if you don't come near I'm caught in this cold with nothing but fear You are my fortress, my refuge, my home You are my one God, I can't stand alone I'm lost in the darkness if you don't come near Caught in the cold With nothing but fear You are my fortress My refuge, my home You are my one God I can't stand alone So now I will praise you In the midst of my fear my praise goes before you, your coming is near. Now I will praise you and give you my fear. Your love lasts forever, your kingdom draws near. Yes, now I will praise you and lift up my voice. Your glory surrounds you. In you I rejoice Now I will praise you Though hell marches on Your words are my warfare I'll battle with song 